One morning, Bill Charlton was riding a half-broke horse, and he couldn't ride very good. The horse cut up some, and Bill got mad and spurred him. At that time, they all had these Mexican spurs with long rowels and bells on them and a long hook, the cinch hook it was called, on top of the rowel. This was to hook into them leather bands when a horse was bucking and keep you from being throwed. Now Bill accidentally ran this hook into the cinch ring, and it caught there, and the horse bucked him off. He would have been kicked to death in a minute. I was riding a green horse myself, but I got alongside Bill's horse and grabbed the cheek strap and throwed myself out of the saddle. But my own spur caught on the cannel, and there I was, stretched out for about a second between them two horses. Then I got loose and dropped to the ground and got the cinches unbuckled and the saddle off and Bill out of it. He was pretty well shaken up and he thanked me. He said, what have I got that you want? I said, give me that little bay horse. He said, hell, take a good horse. But I wanted the little bay. So he gave him to me. And that was how I got little Billy, named after Bill Charlton, that was my top horse for 26 years. The next day I caught him up to ride and he showed me a thing or two. He started to buck. And first my six-shooter went, then my Winchester went, then I went, and he finished up by bucking the saddle over his head. After that, I would not have taken a million dollars for him. He was about 10 years old when I got him, and was 36 years old when he died on this ranch of old age. He was a wonderful rope and cut horse, but I thought so much of him, I never used him much, only to ride him to town. That was the reason he lasted so long. My arm was really never the same after that stretching. In a couple years, rheumatism set in where the ligaments was torn, and I always had to have somebody saddle my horse for me on bad mornings. That was the price I paid for little Billy. One pony might be particularly good at cutting out and in, a fast runner in a spurt, but either a bit shy of a thrown lariat, or not expert in doing his part after the riata had made its catch. Nevertheless, he might be invaluable in driving stock despite his restricted usefulness in the game played in the corral. Another pony, perfect at the roping work, might be slow in a dash to headstock running in the open, but, notwithstanding this, he might be capital for business within the corral. Some ponies did all things well, and they were regarded as being almost royal rank. As a result of this lack of uniformity in the horse's qualifications, to an efficient cowboy on a large ranch were assigned several ponies. One animal for one class of work, another for another. To such a cowboy was assigned also a horse of less attainment, and this beast was used in the commonplace errand, running rides of every day. The various animals allotted to a man, however humble he might be, were left severely alone by all other men on the ranch, and the horse's assignee, so long as he rode for the ranch, was sole lord of his string. You see, a cutting horse is as important to a cowpoke as a hammer is to a carpenter. If your horse is trained right and is a good horse to start with, you can go into the herd and cut the critter you want out of the herd and you just have the horse push against it or hit it with your lasso. Then your horse will stay behind that critter till it gets out of the herd and will chase it plumb through the herd if necessary. Another day's easy travel brought us to within a mile of the railroad terminus. But it also brought us to one of the hardest experiences of our trip. For each of us knew, as we unsaddled our horses, that we were doing it for the last time. There was a feeling of regret in our hearts which we could not dispel. At no time in my life before or since have I felt so keenly the parting between man and horse as I did that September evening in Montana. For on the trail an affection springs up between man and his mount, which is almost human. Every privation which he endures, his horse endures with him. Carrying him through fallen weather, swimming rivers by day, and riding in the lead of stampedes by night. Always faithful, always willing, and always patiently enduring every hardship, from exhausting hours under saddle to the sufferings of a dry drive. The men who knew them then can never forget them or the part they played in that long drive.